So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Brooks and Corey water retention equation. This is an older water retention model. It's from the 60s and it has been used in soil science and petroleum engineering and groundwater hydrology for several decades now. Before you have you had the, the, the Van Genuchten model, it was also very popular in soil science specifically. The reason that is not very it's not used a lot in soil science anymore. It's because in perhaps in other areas as well. It's because it is a piecewise model or a segmented model. What does it mean to say it's a segmented model? You have a condition here for the water potential, and you have one of the parameters here, which is called sometimes called the bubbling pressure. And there is a condition related to one of the parameters that will uh, define how the function behaves, behaves. So this is a segmented function. A segmented function is not necessarily continuous. So because of this, this condition of being a segmented or piecewise function, it behaves on a way that is not really physically realistic near saturation water contents. You see in petroleum engineering in groundwater hydrology sometimes instead of theta this is represented as the relative saturation the, the relative saturation is a dimensionless number and it's actually what you have you need to get the, the relative saturation you need to divide the water content by the porosity of the medium so being a segmented model you need specific uh, computational resources or computational techniques to, to fit this equation. You can't just plug this equation directly, directly into a nonlinear regression algorithm and get a result. You have to do some adaptations. Some of the programs that deal with nonlinear regression that are more uh, commercial packages, they have modules that in which you could do segmented or piecewise re re regression directly, but in programming languages, sometimes you have to tweak a little bit so you can fit the, the segmented regression. So you have the water content as a function of the psi term here is the metric potential in soil science and sometimes still in capillary in civil engineering, groundwater hydrology and petroleum engineering. This is sometimes referred to as the capillary potential. So theta is a function of psi, or the metric potential. We, we are using here um, the absolute value of pi, psi because psi is a negative number. And uh, sometimes you have problems with these functions, these functions if you use negative numbers. So you have a condition related to one of the param parameters. One of the parameters of this equation are theta r, theta s, psi b and lambda so you have to fit this equation to data and the fitting parameters are those parameters that I, that I just described and the variables are theta and psi so the condition related to psi b is that if psi along during the fitting procedure or with the fitting procedure if psi becomes greater than psi b this function is fitted but when psi is less than psi b, the bubbling pressure, theta is the saturated water content. So you see that here, saturated water content, it's the mass move volumetric water content that the soil or the porous media can uh, hold. And theta r is what is called the residual water content. If you take psi here and take it to infinity, this function will uh, go to the residual water content. It's not really realistic, but it serves its purpose. I mean, the relative the residual water content. You see on newer models that you can drain water beyond the, the residual water content, and there's models today that take that into account. So you need to fit with this condition in mind. You need to, you need to have a procedure that takes this principle this condition into account. In more practical terms, what you have is 
two regions of this water retention function below C B in absolute value theta equals theta s or saturation water content a straight line here so this is why this model is not really realistic you have a discontinuity here and you have a straight line here above for psi values above the, the bubbling pressure this is the function that describes the process so you have a, a power law a power decay function here and a straight line so how can we fit this I have a little procedure here that I that I've done in Python that fits this equation taking into consideration the discontinuity or the piecewise nature of the model. If you don't have a, a, a piecewise model for a continuous model, you can use standard nonlinear regression techniques. Here we have to tweak the nonlinear regression procedure a little bit so we can fit this data. These are the modules that I'm using in this, in this program, NumPy, or NumPy, SciPy, Optimize, Importing, Cure, Fit, and Least Squares. So we're going to use these modules here, this module here, to fit the nonlinear regression equation. And we're using matplotlib to plot the data. I'm using data from the original Brooks and Corey report, I'm using the Toshe silt loan data. Phi here is the porosity of the, the soil or, or of the porous media. S is an array of data here, which is in, in relative saturation. So relative saturation is normalized from zero to one. And uh, it's in, 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 in essence, relative saturation is the water content divided by this porosity term here. I will be converting the data back to data to water to volumetric water content so we can fit this function in a form that I present you in this slide. So, so I can feature in this form. You could just fit it uh, as a relative water content, then you wouldn't have these other parameters here, the theta s and theta r parameters. So, to fit a nonlinear regression procedure, you need the initial gas value of, of your parameters. You need to some starting values and these are the starting values that I'm choosing. You can choose those values looking at the data, theta r, theta s, psi b, but the bubbling pressure is when the, the curve starts to, when the water content starts to decrease at a given critical water potential or matrix potential, this is psi b. And lambda is a little bit more difficult, but it's related to the distribution of, of pores or, or it's a porosity parameter. Here I define the piecewise nonlinear regression model. So it's the Brooks and Carr equation. And I'm returning here with the function piecewise on the condition that if x is less or equal than p or if c psi is less or equal than psi b, then theta is theta s. And if psi is greater than psi b, then you would fit this function here, which is the broken core equation. So using those two lambda functions here. So lambda is just a, a definition from Python and uh, it has nothing to do with the lambda parameter that, are, that we're fitting in this equation. So I get these values here and I put in an init, init par, which is a small vector here that holds the values of this initial, initial parameter, so we can plug it into the nonlinear regression procedure. The nonlinear regression procedure is this curve fit here, and this curve fit outputs popped, which is the best fit parameters, and p -cov, which is the covariant, covariance matrix of the parameters. So BC. I'm invoking this function here. This is the x, data. Theta is the y. It's the data here that I converted from s. P 
zero is the vector of initial gas of the parameters and the method used is the levenberg marquardt algorithm which is a very efficient algorithm it has some some problems if you if you need constraints on your function but it, it usually it works better than other algorithms for for water retention curves on my ex curves on my experience here i'm creating a vector of x just to plot the fit data so just xd here lens space 1 to 10,000 10,000 uh, values this is a function that puts the Brooks and Corey condition to plot the uh, predicted data so I'm invoking here the function where of numpy where if xd if any of those x values is greater than popped to this is the the psi b parameter that it was output outputted here from popped so if if psi is greater than psi b then we use this condition here which is the brooks and core equation and popped zero popped one pop two and pop three are the fitting parameters that after the fitting so it's the best fitting values of that param of the parameters or the parameters here so one zero here is just you have uh, four parameters in this case and the first is theta s theta r two is psi b and three is lambda so this condition generates the the predicted data here i'm just asking the procedure to print the best fit parameters or, or the best fit parameters the predicted data and the estimated covariance matrix so just three simple printing printing procedures this is the plot using matplotlib of the 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 original data theta versus psi using this symbol here and theta p versus xd the, the vector of, of of simulated psi for the simulated data using line here a dotted line labels as the scale is log you see that most water retention models you are best understood or best seen in, in a, an x logarithm scale i call the plot here i just create a, a, a vector here of predicted water content values on the same dimension of this the original data so the same number of values you see in essence what i'm doing is just applying the same condition here here but on the original data so i can do a, uh, a plot of the predicted versus observed data so i could you could do a lot of more of uh, diagnostics on the nonlinear regression procedure you could calculate uh, confidence interval interval of the parameters and all of that but we're just doing a predicted versus observed here thing here just just so you can see if the data are in agreement just a simple thing i'm not worried right now with the the, the statistical properties of the fitting parameters okay so let's run this and see what happens i'm running So the first plot here, see the, the you, in blue, the blue dots here are the original Brooks and Core data, and this orange yellow light, light, uh, line here is the fitting model. So you can see clearly here the discontinuity, and here is the Psi B, or the bubbling pressure. So this is the, the power law or decay law here fraction, and this is the constant uh, fraction of the water retention curve so it, it fits the, it's in very good agreement i didn't look at the statistical properties but looking just visually it appears to be in very good agreement here's the predicted versus observed data i could put the one to one line here but it appears to be in very good agreement we're not checking our square or or, or any of those other parameters and here is the best feeding parameters these parameters here are checked with the original report and they're pretty close to the the values that were reported by brooks and core for this soil 
on their original report. This is the predicted data vector and this is the estimated covariance matrix. As I, as I said, you can do a lot of more statistics on this to check the, the validity of the parameters and all of that, but we're just doing something simple here to show you how to fit the, the Brooks and Corey equation to your data.